Hi everyone, welcome back to Link's Awakening DX for the first of two bonus videos that I'm going to be doing in this series. So, in this one I've just started a new file off and I've just went and got the sword. I've just killed that enemy there which is going to be important in a couple of minutes. I need to kill eight enemies before I do this next glitch. So that's one, that's two, three, and four. And the reason that I need to kill eight enemies is because it's going to affect a certain value that's going to change basically where I warp to in this next glitch that I'm going to do. It needs to be exactly 8 to get the results that I want, so that's 8 killed. And they were all on my path, which is good, so I can just head back to the village now. And the glitch that I'm going to be showing off here is the infamous doghouse glitch, or the kennel glitch, or the wrong warp glitch, whatever you want to call it. It's this house right here, if you go up to the top of it, and wall clip right against the side like this, go all the way down, then hold down left, he enters it from like the back door, which isn't actually there, and it sends you to this place, so... It may not be immediately obvious, but this is like a room from level 2. If you hold up left, you can see more of level 2, but it's all glitched out and stuff, so this is kind of cool. There's a lot of stuff that you can do in here. I mean, most of it's completely useless, but some of it's really worth showing, so... As you can see, the chest sprite is very messed up. You can only see the left half of it twice, so I'm going to open this. And right away, I get the bird key, and it actually does put it on the inventory, and of course, it starts some weird music at the same time. So I'm just going to navigate this place a little bit. Here's a mini-boss room. Um, just to see what I can find. So this is obviously a room from level 1 next to where the rock's feather is, but it's not connected to the next room, which is really weird. So the sort of area that I'm in right now, you can't tell on the map, cause it just shows the regular map, but it's like a collection of the caves and stuff like that, and some of the dungeons. And yeah, they're just like all out of order, and I just want to show something else there. I opened that and went off screen and came back in. I do have the power bracelet now, it's level 1. If I do it again, Although it was another grey bracelet, it actually is the second one, and unfortunately you can't get any higher than that. For some items you can, like it will just keep adding to the level, but for this one, it actually caps off at 2, at least in this version of the game. I'm pretty sure that in the original, there's a similar glitch you can do that lets you get like a level 3 or a level 4 or whatever. So that, that sound is really bloody annoying, I wonder if you guys can hear that as loudly as I can. But in this chest is the ocarina. Don't really need that right now, but um... I might have some use for it later on. Am I stuck? No, I'm not stuck. Okay, so in this chest right here is what looks like a funny coloured guardian acorn, but it's actually the Yoshi doll. Well, it's not really the Yoshi doll, it's just the next trade sequence item. So if I were to come back in here and do it again, I would actually have the ribbon, and I can just keep doing this over and over again. Now, I'm not going to sit through this whole thing. I mean, I am, but I'm going to speed it up because I'm playing on emulator, and I've got a speed up key on my controller, so I'm just going to do that to make this really quick, and it also means that we don't have to listen to that awful sound every time that I open a chest, so... I just want to show off what happens if you go beyond, like, the end of the trading sequence. Need to make sure I don't actually save and quit. That'd be pretty terrible. If you do save and quit in a place like this, you would have to go and kill the eight enemies again. Am I stuck? No, you just have to be a little bit careful on the chests, I think. It does seem like you get stuck quite easily there, but... This probably looks absolutely ridiculous seeing him just speeding up like that, but it's just the only way to make a section like this bearable, because otherwise it'd be literally the same thing, like 20 plus times or whatever, so... Alright, let's have a look where we are now. What one are we at? We're at... Oh, actually, <laughs> this is the one right after you finish it, so the, the previous chest that I opened was the magnifying glass. This is the one right after it. Um, the next couple, I think, are just going to be blank, so I'll just breeze through them. Yeah, there is something there, you just can't see it. Because after a few more of these, yeah, that's like the, the arrows from the trendy game. The little conveyor belt thing. Pretty sure this one's blank as well. Yep. And... That's blank again. Um, there's one that I want to get because I know it looks really cool. I think it may be the next one. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's this one. It gives you, like, the bow and the hook shot. If I were to keep doing it, it would just cycle through more items that you can get on this half of the pause menu and put them there. It's always in a pair as well, but, um, yeah. We'll just, uh, we'll just leave that. Okay, so in this chest here, I've already done a bit of research on this, as you can probably tell. Are these guys ever red in this game? I can't remember. Or oh, whatever. In this chest right here is a shield. It gives me the level 2 shield. As you can see, it looks like it. It's the bigger shield. If I go off screen and come back in, however open it again, it gives me the level 3 shield, which doesn't actually exist, and it just looks like the regular one, the level 1 one. So I'm going to do the same thing again, just to take this pretty high up as well. Ugh, I'm 
need to be more careful with that. I pretty much just want to show off what happens if you get above level 9. Okay, so... It now starts taking things from, like, the little bit at the bottom of the screen. It's taking the, the L from, like, the level 1, or level whatever, so now it says LL. I can back in again, it's going to take the A from, like, the A button icon. I'm going to leave it there, because it looks like it's, I've now got the Link's Awakening shield, which is pretty cool. Okay, so, where are we going now? I guess I'm going to go just explore and see if I can find any more chests. Okay, here's one here. Yeah, some of them don't actually have items in them. They just um, change the music in the room, or some of them have text in them. It's pretty cool. So, yeah, I guess that one ends right there, though. So, where am I going to go now? I guess I'll have a look up here. Another empty room. There's quite a lot of these, and the, even in like the regular cave maps, there's quite a lot of that. This is a room from Dungeon 5, obviously. Um, this is Dungeon 4. As you can see, they're just all... Oh, crap, I didn't mean to get that. Ugh. Well, at least we've got music now, but it's probably going to get replaced shortly anyway with something else. Um, this chest right here has a key in it normally in Dungeon 4, see if I can access it. A lot of the places you can't actually move into just because there's like invisible objects in the road. Okay, so that's the magic powder bag. I'm pretty sure that if I collect that again, it doesn't actually give me anything else, but I'll just verify that. Pretty sure it's still at zero, yeah, whatever. Okay, so I, I really don't want to get hit by that guy. So I'm just going to have a wander around, I guess, see what I can find. Okay, here's the room where you get the flippers. What's in this chest? Yeah, it changed the music, and it's the the text from the guy that you can phone. So, yeah. Now, as I said, I did a bit of research into this, and before I get to that, this is like the skeletons from the dungeon the actual dungeon part of Dungeon 1 that you can fall into if you fail the boss fight. This is the, the skeleton sprite from that. They're actually all over the place. I'm gonna... Um, actually, no, I will open this chest. Because I know it gives you a shield, so... I guess I can just go through this a little bit more. It changes the music as well. Uh, the LB. Yeah, there's another kind of shield that I want to go for, and it's gonna take me a little while to get to it, because... It kind of does this obnoxious thing after it goes through like all of those things. It starts going through the graphics for the keys from the pause menu. So that's the tail key that it's just done. This one's the angler key. As you can see, it's like the little fish head. That's just the bottom of the key there. But once the keys are all out of the road, that's the face key. I can get something pretty nice on my shield. It's the bird key, which obviously we already have because it was the first thing I collected. And I think the next one... Should be the next one, is the one that I'm after. Oh, no, nope, maybe not. Maybe there's a couple more. I don't know what that sprite is. This one's just a black block. That's, oh, this is the golden leaf, the top of the golden leaf, which I also don't have in my inventory. I don't know what this thing is at all. And this is the one I want, the love shield. Because it's taken, like, even though there's no empty hearts on my, like, little thing at the bottom of the screen there, it's still taking it from that. And it is, but if I open it again, it'll give me, like, a half full heart. Unfortunately, if you open it a third time, it doesn't give you a full heart, so I'm not even going to bother with that. Okay, so, let's just have a look. It's another sort of undergroundy section. The skeletons hanging everywhere. Now, there's a specific room that I'm looking for. Because it has a pretty unique thing in it. I think I'm on the road to it right now. Yeah, it's just up here, actually. Here's the Dungeon 4 boss. He's obviously a garbled mess, and it's giving me the text for the, the third Lock Arena song you can get. This boss is a lot easier when you can just walk up to him. I don't have to um, like bother with the swimming controls. So I think it's just like... Yeah, five sword attacks, and... I can just grab this heart container. This makes me wonder what would happen if you did this glitch after you already have all 20 heart containers. I think it probably just wouldn't display it or something. I don't know. So, I need to be careful here, because these things are actually pits. What's this one? Oh, it's the Mysterious Woods music. And it's the stealing music. The stealing text, rather. Um, okay, let's just keep going. Here's another one. You'll find it a lot of the enemies. Not all of them, but most of them are kind of stuck to, like, one little square. Oh, God. Uh, at least I skipped the text right at that time. Okay, this guy obviously isn't. Give me a fairy, which normally that one changes the music actually. I guess because I've got the guardian acorn, it didn't do it. 
All right, let's just keep going. So these chests here, yeah, these aren't real. These are just, you can tell they're like not real because it actually looks like a chest. If it was real, it would be like this sort of thing where you can see the left half of it twice. Uh, where am I? Yeah, I'm still in these, these underground, these sections are pretty useless. They don't really have anything in them. I'm just gonna run around until I find things. I think that's an owl statue, it looks like a raft. This thing up here's got a really creepy looking face. It's just like one of those big statues that you can pick up with the, the power bracelet. I think this is a fairy fountain. They actually do work, by the way, the fairy fountains. I don't know if that one works because usually they, the music for them starts. Anyway, this is a pretty unique thing here. This is the guy from the Trendy game and we get to see him in a way that you normally never can when he's like pointing upwards or downwards. So you can see how wide his face is there, it's pretty, pretty ugly. I can't even kill him, I think they must be like... Those, uh... Spike thing, what the hell is this? So oh, it damages me, so... I guess it's like a spark or something. Alright, let's just see if there's anything else we can find in here. Alright, something about Taran. Oh no. Please don't sing the song. Alright, okay. I wonder what would happen though, like, because I do have the ocarina, if she sang the song, would I get the song? That'd be kind of interesting. Oops. Right, so we're back in Dungeon 3 now. This is like where you would go and get the Nightmare Key. But of course it just takes me to this place, another graveyard. And we're at, oh god, it's a bloody third song text again. That one comes up way too often. But at least I've got the cool mini boss music now. So this is, yeah, this is Dungeon 1. And yeah, I guess I'll just show that this actually does work. This glitched and horrible looking thing can actually heal your wounds. It looks like the genie from Dungeon 2 and the Tektite and some X thing and the raft, which we never actually saw in the main playthrough. Alright, I'll just have, I'll go through a couple more rooms because I think we've seen pretty much what this place looks like now. Oops. Oh god. I don't know why this text comes up so often. It's really weird to me that they, they chose that one for it. Like it's some kind of placeholder text or something. Uh, here's the room that I had trouble with. I could like jump over it with the hookshot and the feather. It'd be nice if I could find the hookshot and the feather in here. Okay, we've been here before. At least one that looked like this. I think Marin talked to us there. We'll go left for a little bit and see if we can find anything there. I'll actually gladly take that one because it speeds him up. Okay. By the way, I should point out that whenever you see like a little, like a, like stairs, they actually do work and they will take you to their correct location. So if I were to find one and go in it, it would take me to... Oh no. Oh, I've got, no, I've got the half heart shield. That's fine. I don't want to get rid of the shield though. The heart shield. This is one of the, the instruments. I'm not going to pick it up because it just crashes the game if you do that. Back in Dungeon 3. I said I was going to go left. Why did this start going up again? Right. Let's see what's in here. Uh, nothing. I, I should have probably read the text. I don't know. I really just want to find a new item in a chest. Oh. Okay. Alright, let's have a look at this one. Oh, well, it's given me the, the game over music, which is always nice. Uh, okay, I got myself. I got half of myself out of that. Did it give me anything on the menu? No, it didn't. Oh well. I wish I could get to, like, the rock's feather. I know I'm on route for it, but it's not structured in the way that you might think. Where's this? Oh, this is the rooster. This is like the rooster skeleton, let's see. Oh, I can't do anything with it. That's a shame. Is this dungeon 6? Yeah, dungeon 6. With the... The cuckoo music from the mountains, which we never saw in the main playthrough either. Because it's completely useless, so here's another one. Oh, did I? 
Yeah, it doesn't actually give you one, unfortunately. Another green graveyard. Really ugly looking. I think this is the furthest into the doghouse that I've ever actually gone. Uh, I'm not going to get that. Well, obviously I've been here before, but it was... It gave me the magic powder before. I wonder if it will still give me that, because obviously the screen has changed. Yeah, it does. Right, is it actually still the magic powder? Yes, it is. Okay. Okay, I'll find one more chest that I haven't been to yet. I've been to that one, so I'm going to ignore it. And then I'm going to exit this place, because I think we've pretty much seen what it has to offer. And the reason that I had to kill eight enemies, because I'm, I'm not sure I actually did explain this, is because um, it sets like a certain index or whatever. What's this? Oh, it actually is a gold leaf, okay. Um, yeah, it sets like a certain index, which takes you to a certain kind of version of the underworld, which has like all these chests and stuff that you can access. So, it's really important that you do eight. Okay, this is the Rock's Feathers chest, and it just gave me music. Some music from the Animal Village. Oh, I got the bow. Okay, cool. I think that's a, an appropriate stopping point. I've got a lot of, um... A lot of items. Oh, well, okay. There's one more here, but I've been to this room already. We'll just see what's in the chest, though. I just love to sing. What can I say? What do you like to do? Alright, whatever. Ah, uh, this is unreal chests. Okay, so... I guess that's an appropriate stopping point for this part of the video. I'll just save and quit just to show that when you do that, it puts you in this house. I still have all of the items that I got. No instruments, but I've got a golden leaf and I've got a bunch of other cool stuff, including a glitched shield. So yeah, um, I guess what I'm going to do now is I'll just reset the game. I'll go back to the main menu. I'm going to delete this file and I'm going to show you the quickest known way to beat this game, which involves getting to the final boss battle without collecting a single instrument, and obviously it involves a doghouse glitch. And some pretty cool strategies actually for how to actually kill the boss. So this is going to be kind of an impromptu speedrun I suppose, but I'm, I'm not very good at this route, I've not really practiced it a lot as you can see from that horrible movement there. But yeah, it just starts off as normal, getting the shield and all that. I'm going to have to pop down to the beach and get the sword after this. And after that, it's pretty much just going to be glitched from then on out. So that's definitely something to look forward to. So the first thing that I want to do after I go down to the beach and get the sword is I want to go and obviously do the doghouse glitch again. And I'm going to do the same one that I showed at the start of this video. Because... I need to get to like a screen where I can kill, I can kill, where I can get a certain chest, and I can only get that if I kill eight enemies first, because that gives you the right index for it. So I'll just pop in here and pick up the sword really quick, just by walking into it with the shield out once again, because that allows me to pick it up just after the owl like goes away. If he ever stops talking, which doesn't look like he's going to, never get tired of complaining about that. Okay, we're not actually going to go to the Mysterious Forest at all, we're just going to go straight to the doghouse after this, after killing eight enemies along the way. So yeah, yeah, it's the sword, come on, hurry up. This cutscene is so damn long, man, seriously. Okay, so that's one. Not going to need those rupees at all, but they're on my road, so why not? Two, three, four... Five... It's also important that you wait till it's dead before you actually go off the screen. If you kill it while it's dying, it won't count. So, yeah, just watch out for that. And that's number eight. So, with those done, I can head up here. And straight back into the doghouse from the back again. Just wall clipping, heading down, and going inside. So, I'm now here. Level two again. But I know exactly where I'm going this time. I'm just going straight for where the the ocarina was, which is just a couple screens north and west I believe from here. Again, just being careful not to actually touch any of those stairs because it will take me to those, like to where they are on the real, the real game map and I don't want that at all, that's really bad. And just up here should be the ocarina, okay so I'll get it and just save warp back to, well, you would think it would put you to the doghouse entrance but it always puts you here as I said, as I said before, so. I'm now going to go back into the doghouse, but not before 
I go and kill a bunch of different enemies. It's going to have to be two enemies this time because that's going to give me a different index which is going to let me like get to a certain place that I need to get to. The, the, like When you kill eight enemies it's really good for like if you want to go and look for treasure and stuff like that but if you want to beat the game really quickly you've got to kill two so you'll see that the doghouse is actually different this time. It actually does put me in it but it's glitched so I can walk down to the castle area which we never went to in the main playthrough. Back up to here and you need to go through these next rooms in a certain order to avoid getting stuck. So I'm going to go up, I'm going to go right, I'm going to align myself with this bed, go up, move up a little bit, and then just go like this. Then left, straight up, up a little bit, and then right. And right here is the final boss of the game. So I'm already at him. In the main playthrough I mentioned that you can actually kill this guy with just a sword. It's hard to do, so I'm going to do it now. At the apex of his jump I'm going to release this spin attack. Okay, so I got him. And that first hit wasn't frame perfect, but the, the next two are, so I need to just hit him with the sword right as he lands. I got it there. And one more should do it. I'm actually having pretty good luck with this. Usually it takes a long time. No, I missed it there. It was too late. Oh fuck, I don't want to take damage here. It's actually really bad if you take damage here. I mean, not for this phase, but for a little bit later on in the fight. It's really important that you have as much health as you can. Okay, I got him there. So now we're on to Aghanim, which is definitely the most random luck-based part of the fight. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but the first two hits are always good hits, though. Like, you'll always do the, the attack that lets you actually damage him for the first two hits. It's only on hits number three and four that this becomes an issue. Where you can actually do an attack, which can potentially make you lose a lot of time if he keeps doing it. So which one is this going to be? Got the bad one. Well, you just move out of the way so you don't take damage from it. It took me a while to get my reaction time to this good enough to actually avoid taking damage there. So I got the bad one again. There's some good swordless luck right here. One time when I was doing a speedrun of this game I got... I think it was like six bad luck um, attacks in a row. Which kind of annoyed me a little bit. But I got a good one there. Got a bad one. Ugh, right, come on. You're just having a laugh now, I can... Whatever, I'm not even mad, this isn't even a real speedrun, it doesn't matter at all. If it was, I'd probably have reset though. Oh, I'm also going to equip the ocarina, just so I don't forget to do it later on, because I'm going to need it in a little minute. Okay, cool. So he's dead. So now I'm going to stand just to the left of the fin on the fish here. And as soon as I hear this boss make it sound, release, and just mash the A button for a little while. And this will kill him before he can even move. So that should be enough. And now we're at Ganon, so I can do a couple of spin attacks on him. And what I'm going to do now is that flame that just appeared, I need to pay attention to it. It doesn't matter which flame this is, any of them work, but I'm going to choose that one because it just appeared. I'm going to pause buffer with the start, me the, uh, start menu until it appears as a bat for the first frame. So this could take a couple more pauses. More than a couple it seems, but that's okay. It's pretty quick. It's much quicker than Ocarina of Time's pause buffering, which is always good. Any minute now. Okay, there it is. So now I'm going to buffer seven times with the map screen instead. So what I'm doing for this is whenever I like unpause or come out of the map, I just hold the button again right away. So that's one, that's two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So when I come out of this time, I'm going to hold the button for the ocarina. And the reason that this causes any sort of thing at all is that Link plays the ocarina on the frame where the bat would start attacking you. And what this does is, it causes it to stay in place. Now that seems completely useless right now. It actually can still damage you if you go up to it. So obviously avoid that. But in a little minute it's going to seem, or it's going to be obvious why that was really important. So yeah, you can only damage him with spin attacks unless you have the level 2 sword, which obviously I don't in this playthrough this part of the playthrough at least. Where's he going? I think one more hit might do it. Yep. So for this next one you can just spin attack it once and that's it dead. So the reason that I did that thing with the bat, which needs the ocarina to do by the way, is because 
what's going to happen now is when the final part of the boss spawns, it's actually going to spawn two of it, and the other one's going to be what used to be the bat. But the bat will also die at the same time, which means that the game will think that I've actually killed the boss even though I haven't. So I'm going to hang about in this corner so that I can lure the boss down to me. So yeah, he's dead. And when it starts moving, I'm just going to head left, hopefully to avoid getting hit by it, and make it onto the stairs. Yeah, it did a lot of damage. As you can see, it's really important to have enough hearts there to actually make it, otherwise it will kill you on the stairs. Sometimes it only attacks you once, some, but most of the time it attacks you twice, and if it attacks you twice, then unless you've got at least two and a half hearts, then you're screwed, you're going to die. But yeah, that's it. That's how you beat Link's Awakening DX, and... Well, I was going to say under 10 minutes, but really, if you're really, really good at it, it can be like under 5 minutes, I believe. Anyway, yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.